If you're anything like me, and you drink a lot of tea, you've probably wondered, is drinking all this tea bad for me? I mean, if I ate this many potato chips, I would definitely be in big trouble. So, does tea cause any diseases? The answer is actually yes. In 1983, Sichuan first started finding cases of fluorosis due to heavy tea drinking. And from the 80s to the 90s, this was found in other provinces and work was undertaken to try to reduce the number of cases. And even after decades of work, in 2016, there were still seven provinces reporting an elevated number of cases of fluorosis due to heavy tea drinking. You've probably guessed that today's video is about tea and fluoride. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Phil from Gen Tea. At Gen Tea, we specialize in tasting grade Chinese tea, and on our YouTube channel, we cover things like how to brew, tea travel, and much, much more. So if that kind of thing interests you, please consider subscribing, and let's dive into today's video. I suspect most of you have heard of fluoride since it's in so many toothpaste brands. Fluoride is an essential nutrient for the human body. It's really important for bone and teeth health, and in Canada and the US, many cities actually add it to the water supply. But did you know that fluoride is also in tea plants? It gets into the tea plants through the soil, fertilizer, and air. And once it's in the tea plants, it accumulates in the roots, the flower, the seeds, and the leaves. But predominantly, it's in the leaves. And it's not just a little bit in the leaves, Tea is known as a hyperfluoride accumulator. It gets a lot more fluoride than other plants, but somehow doesn't experience the toxic effects that other plants would encounter if they had the similar level. Why does tea accumulate so much fluoride and how does it prevent these negative effects? Well, this is not fully understood, but as tea lovers, we're more concerned with how this fluoride in the tea affects us as tea drinkers. Besides the environmental reasons, there are other factors that influence the level of fluoride in tea. The most impactful is the maturity of the leaf. An old, mature leaf has more fluoride than a bud or a young leaf. The cultivar influences the amount of fluoride as well, where small leaves have less fluoride than big leaf cultivars. The harvest season also plays an important role, summer and fall being higher in fluoride than a spring pluck. The region where the tea comes from is also important. Yunnan and Guangdong tend to have less fluoride than other regions. Process also influences the level of fluoride in tea. Green and white tea processing tends to preserve more of the fluoride that occurred in the leaf than a process like oolong or dark tea making. And finally, brewing method is another important factor that influences the level of fluoride. And it's something that you and I have control over. The amount of leaf, the temperature, and the time the leaf spends in the water all have an impact. For example, after five minutes in boiling water, over 70% of the fluoride is out of the leaf and into the liquor. Tea collects a lot of fluoride. Fluorosis due to tea consumption has been a concern in key regions in China since the 80s, so it's not overly surprising to know that China was the first country to introduce regulated limits on the amount of fluoride that can occur in tea. In 2003, the Ministry of Agriculture introduced a limit of not more than 200 milligrams per kilogram of fluoride is allowed to be present in tea. In 2004, efforts were made to standardize the way these tests were conducted to make sure measurements were accurate. In the regions impacted by higher rates of tea-induced fluorosis, extra steps are taken. On the producer side, the cultivar selection is carefully considered to reduce the amount of fluoride that's collected in the tea plant initially. Plucking standards are also introduced to further reduce amounts of fluoride that end up in the finished tea. And finally, steps are added to the processing to lower the amount of fluoride in the finished tea. For consumers in these regions, efforts are made to educate people to only buy from sources abiding by the regulations and to adjust their brewing habits. The first one to two minutes of boiled tea, for example, should not be consumed. And tea should not be prepared with soda ash because soda ash is alkaline and fluoride dissolves more easily in an alkaline solution. So is this a concern for you and me? 
When was the last time you prepared tea with soda ash? The answer is no, it's not a concern for you and me. And you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, I drink a lot of tea. I believe you, so do I. And so do farmers and producers all over the world, and so do many other people all over the world, and it's not a concern. The issue with tea-induced fluorosis is specific to the way tea is consumed in certain Chinese minority cultures, so it's not an issue for you and I. Now that that's out of the way, you can feel confident grabbing your kettle and brewing up your next round of tea and maybe keep on watching some videos. If you like the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click that notify bell so you know whenever we make a new video. Thanks for watching and keep steeping!